Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, great to see so many folks here and some uh, familiar, friendly faces. Uh, my name is uh, Pat Christmas. I'm a staffer with the Committee of 70. Um, we're here to talk about uh, council redistricting and in particular, uh, the boundary between the, the third district and the fourth district uh, in West Philly. Um, here with my colleague, um, uh, Abu Edwards. Abu uh, Edwards. Uh, my name is Abu Edwards. I am a uh, consultant uh, with the Committee of 70. Uh, I own a, a community engagement firm called Millennial uh, MIA Strategies LLC. And I've also um, launched a uh, and co-founded a political action committee uh, called Millennials in Action, which was founded in 2015. And our goal ever since has been to engage urban Black millennials in the political process to become civically engaged all around the uh, city of Philadelphia. I am also a committee person of the 42nd Ward, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the Northwest section of Philadelphia. And I've held so many different hats in the community and I'm happy to be uh, with uh, the West Philly uh, team. Um, I am a uh, graduate of Parkway West High School. I'm the last graduate of Parkway West Ah, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. No, you're good. It felt, it felt good to um, see some familiar faces and um, I look forward to learning more about how we can make uh, councilmatic redistricting fair and transparent. Um, I also want to kind of kick it off to one of our community hosts who's been uh, helping us recruit um, and uh, is here tonight. So I'm gonna pass it off to Jabri to kind of introduce themselves. And thank you so much for serving as a host uh, for tonight, Jabri. Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, Pat. Hey, Abu. So it's good to be here with everybody. I'm Javari Jones. I'm the president of the West Philadelphia Corridor Collaborative and glad to be here with everybody um, this evening. Thank you for taking some time out, um, you know, this Monday to learn a little bit more about the redistricting process. Um, and I also want to say I want to thank Committee of 70 for all their hard work in making sure that community organizations and residents um, can understand what this process is, what it means. Um, and how they can um, have an opportunity to have some feedback um, as the city council uh, works to redraw the districts. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you, Barry, so much. Uh, Pat, just kind of want to just jump into it and um, put up a PowerPoint. Yep, yep, we'll do right now. Should be more touch. So just to kind of start off this, has anyone ever heard of councilmatic redistricting? I know that a lot of people have bombarded with um, you know congressional uh, redistricting uh, and state legislative redistricting, but does anyone know um, what councilmatic redistricting is or what does that mean? Uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourselves. This is Brenda Simons. I, I read something and correct me if I'm wrong about it having to do with the the recent census count and the redistrict, what is it, 166,000 or 66,000 people in a district or something like that. And that's the result of the redistricting. It's tied to the census. Uh, yes, I, I don't want to answer your questions. Anybody else want to ch uh, chime in? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? I, we can hear you. Okay, this is Ati Kwesi. And from my understanding of redistricting, it means that that they're going that the that the district as they stand are going to be changed and they're going to either add or subtract. You out there now? Add or subtract um to the various districts okay. and, and reconfigure the districts, all the districts in the city, the council districts much like they did with the congressional districts with Bob Brady and all of them. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? I just want to add that um, redistricting is important to us because we're hoping that it's going to be a fair and open process and that it's going to be based on numbers and not politicians. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're having these community meetings today to make sure that there is input from the community. I mean, it's definitely, again, based on the census and the census has changed and it's done every 10 years. 
I don't even recall there being any any meetings about it 10 years ago, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there were plenty of uh, late or back door meetings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but that's what I know about it so far. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Muller. Um, everybody's right. Um, in 2020, the census was released um, and Philadelphia's population grew slightly where now our current population in the city is about 1.6 million. Um, every 10 years, council has to redraw their maps. And due to the increase in population, some, ten, some districts have seen an increase um, and others haven't. And just kind of just to take us back to the basics, Philadelphia is representative of 17 council people seven council people which represent at large, which are like city representatives, and 10 council people who represents councilmatic districts. Um, and normally during this process, um, it's so important while we're having this community uh, input session because when it comes to councilmatic redistricting, there's, there's not a coalition or a committee that a bipartisan committee that kind of oversees this um, redistricting level to make sure that it is a transparent process. And what we're doing here today uh, is making sure that with this new growth, um, that the communities um, that, that are represented have a voice in this process. I know that you know, we've, we've launched our first community input session in the Logan and Albany area and we targeted an area where 10 years ago they had a different council person. And now this 10 years going around, you know, they, it's a possibility for a new uh, council person. And we also have to understand that the boundaries of when it comes to um, ethnicities and making sure that we're keeping groups of people together and that, and that council people know that this is important to the communities. So this is the reason why we're having this community uh, input session because we want um, members to know that community people pick their elected officials. We pick our maps. We pick on what we want or what we see that should be in our councilmatic district. Um, so we're gonna jump into our councilmatic uh, presentation. Next slide, please. As I stated before, uh, city council must redraw uh, its 10 districts within six months after the, uh, the US census population uh, that was released. So technically council has until fe mid-February to pass the new uh, council matter district lines. And if they literally don't pass it or come up with some type of agreement, um, it is stated um, in the charter that all 17 members will have to uh, not get paid. Um, so this is something that I know that council people don't wanna do, um, especially moving into the new year. Um, districts are supposed to roughly have the same amount of people. So with this new increase in population, with 1.6 million, each district has to have roughly about 160,000 uh, residents in that particular district. February 12th is the deadline. Um, and we have to make sure that council hopefully uh, pushes these maps before then. Uh, next slide, please. Why does redistricting matter? I think a lot, you know, and actually before I get to that, why does redistricting matter? Anybody know what redistricting can um, affect? the implications of wrong redistricting, the implications of gerrymandering. Does anybody want to take a stab at it? Yeah, yeah. This is Dwayne Drummond. Like, I'll take a stab at it. I ain't cut nobody neck tonight. <laughs> um, like, it, 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 it's based off of, like, it, it, it has, like, who's the next council member at large, the council <laughs> member, and who, who's next? And like one thing that like I appreciate this whole conversation going on tonight, but why isn't the councilmatic members here tonight? Cause like if it's a community, they supposed to be the community and everybody on this call is constituents. Like I'm I'm from West Philly. And why isn't um what's it? Richardson here, why Thomas is not here, why Gim is not here, whoever, why is they not here? Like, it's just a conversation and like, it's like we blowing smoke out of our behind. Like we need to have the council members here and the con constituents had to have a conversation with 
the people. Like, if you want to talk about accountability, like, we need these people here. If not, it's just like blowing smoke out of your butt or out of your nose. I have a question. I have something to say. Did you notify the council people? Yeah. Yeah, Miss 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 Ingrid. Let, yeah, let me. Um, uh, but let me. Let Pat, me you should give them some background, a little bit about this campaign and the. the yeah, because you know, I didn't find out. To... The twenty fourth ward didn't find out about this meeting until about um, one something after one. I had to go to the committee of seventy to get the correct Zoom address so I could send it out to everybody in the twenty fourth ward, and and West Palton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, folks. This, hey, this is Pat Christmas, a staff with seventy. If, if I could, let me let me step here and and uh, uh, you know respond to these these really good questions. And uh, you know, for, first, you know, we have certainly you know, we're doing our best to get the word out about these meetings and this this issue. Um, as you know, this group very much well, you know well knows there are a ton of issues out there uh, that communities are facing and the city's facing. Um, so we're doing our best to. To kind of um, you know punch through some of that and make sure that folks know we have this very tight window to redraw the council districts uh, and critically to get community feedback uh, on how those districts should change or not change in certain parts of the city. So so where we are doing our best to get the word out there about that. If you did find out about the meeting um, late, uh, I am so, I am sorry about that. We're going to keep pushing as hard as we can uh, to get the word out about these meetings. There are uh, twelve of them now. Um, that's just through December. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Mr. Edwards and I are, are talking about right now what the plan will be for January, right? Because the, the maps actually don't have to be enacted until uh, mid-February at the latest. So there, there will, there will almost assuredly be more uh, opportunities to weigh in uh, in January, city citywide, on how these boundaries are uh, are, are drawn. And as to the, the question about the the council members, um, yes, every every council member, all 17, even though it's a it's the 10 district members, of course, who are who, who are directly impacted by these boundaries one way or another. Uh, all 17 uh, know about these meetings. All 17 know about the campaign. Um, all 17 uh, of the offices were invited. And I know, uh, looking at the participant list right now, that uh, uh, Councilmember Gaudier's Chief of Staff Max, Max Weiss is with us, and and you know Max will have a opportunity to, to kind of weigh in at the end with any any questions or observations from uh, from what whatever said today but good because I, I do want to stress I mean uh, Abu and I are, are, are creating, creating these spaces for folks in the community to kind of weigh in on these boundaries um, you know council members will have a chance to do that uh, as well whether whether it's an official in an official public hearing or you know when when the negotiations are just happening around around, around these boundaries but to the question of like you know were the council members invited yes yes they absolutely were um, and again, I, I see at least at least one staffer from from Councilmember Gaudet's office with us this evening. And then, just I guess, real quick, since I I, I call that as, is there a staffer with us from uh, Councilmember Curtis Jones Curtis uh, Jones Jr.'s office with us this evening? Just want to make sure if that if there is someone with us that they have a chance to. I, I don't see anyone from Councilman Jones or from the new councilwoman for the third uh, councilman district neither, and they need to well, attend. Well, there, there is, just to be clear, like you know, Max Weiss, the chief of staff for council member Jamie Gaudier is here this evening. Um, and, and uh, you know, again, if, if there is a member from uh, a staffer from the other office, I hope they have a chance to to introduce themselves and say something at the end. At the end. So, so is I, there any way that we can confirm that there is a council person from Jamie Gaudier office? Well, they just said it. Yeah, there, there is. Yeah, folks, there, there is. And, 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 you know, Max, you know, we've saved time at the end of these meetings for, for, uh, for staffers away. I mean, Max, you just want to kind of con confirm your attendance yeah. real quick? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Max Weiss. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a cold. Um, yeah, and I am the council member's chief of staff. I'm sorry if you hear a um, infant in the background. But um, yeah, my plan was to listen um, all meeting and then as Pat mentioned, just chime in um, very briefly at the end. So thanks for coming out tonight and um, for participating. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, Jacqueline, since you have another a question real, uh, real quick? Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, no, I just had a comment that um, yeah. since we no longer have council person Janney, uh, this new kid on the block should have someone to represent because I doubt uh, this new council person, Janie Gaither, understand about redistricting because she's a new kid on the block. Uh, I'm not surprised that uh, Councilman Jones choose not to have a yeah. member of his staff to attend. 
Miss, I'm not if, surprised. I'm not okay. surprised. Yeah, Mr. Acklin, here, hold it one second. If if I could, I, I'm, and I'm sorry, we should, have, you know, uh, you know, make this good and clear at the out, at the outset here. Uh, the purpose of these meetings is to create space for folks in the communities that may be affected by the changing lines uh, to say their piece about how they want to want to see the lines changed, if if at all, right? Um, it, it's, not, it's not a space to talk about any of the council members in particular. And I, and I know that it can be very difficult to kind of separate the, the council districts uh, and then who represents them right now. Um, but if, you know, if, if we could please, it, it'll, it'll, we'll have a better chance of getting the, the community input uh, that we really want to, you know, kind of make clear and then elevate for, for folks across the city to know, right? I mean, not just folks in West Philly, but folks, folks across the city to know uh, what, what folks think. Um, and that's going to work best if we focus on kind of the communities here and then the and then the boundary uh, that we have right now between the third and the fourth right some folks are gonna like that boundary some folks are not going to like it some folks want to have an opinion and and either way would be would be just fine um so uh uh yeah uh Abu, do you want to do you want to kind of kick it through the rest of slides and then yeah, i let me um i just kind of want to follow up yeah please please yeah just follow up really quick <laughs> I think, you know, moving forward, you know, like, like Pat said, and I'm just kind of reinstating it. This is a community input session around councilmatic redistricting. We are not pointing the finger at any elected official. We are literally talking about councilmatic districting. We are, you know, each area that we are focusing on, we literally dropped about 1500 flyers to make this a transparent process. When this is over, the people who register for this event will get a copy of this video so that you guys can take it to your community folks so that other elected officials can see this who are not present to see what we're talking about. Um, I just ask as we move forward in this presentation, if you can't take this presentation, please feel free to drop off and we'll email you the video. Um, but we need to make sure that this is a place that everybody is respected. And if that's not the case, I will ask you to please log off before we continue. Thank you. Um, so many communities, the reason why council, uh, council medical district is important um, because as many folks stated, um, it's about you know keeping the community whole. It's about making sure that districts are not underrepresented and split. Um, and make sure that people have a voice in the political process. Um, when we look at Council Medic District 5, as you see right now, in 2001, this was our current map. We, we saw how city neighborhoods were broken up where the 5th Council Medic District reached literally the lower Northeast. And when we are looking at how it crossed into the 7th uh, District and how it crossed over to the 9th Council Medic District, those are neighborhoods that are split. And that's sometimes what we deal with every single day, where in some neighborhoods, you may live across the street, uh, your friend and your family member may live across the street, you guys may have two different council people, two different state reps, live in two different total senatorial districts. And when we talk about corridors uh, being split among councilmatic districts, then we also look at councilmatic priorities. And I tell people all the time, that's why it's important. Yes, this is not political. But when we look at what is going, the person who is representing that council, that council district, what are the priorities? Are the priorities, you know, of, you know, making sure that resources are coming to the corridors? Those priorities, those are those councilmatic priorities, making sure that the council district is clean. Um, this is the reason why it's important that community folks have this voice because there's so many factors, right? Uh, that we're talking about when we're talking about input. We're talking about where the wards have to have structure, right? Because ward leaders and community people, they don't, they don't want their divisions and their wards broken up. They want to have a stronger voice where they can bring more resources to their communities. The corridors, the businesses, they want someone to hold responsible to make sure, you know, and to, 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 to get resources from. And, 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 and then voters and community folks, you know, they should have the biggest input on you know who their council person are because like I said it, it comes down to what those councilmatic priorities is. Uh, next slide, please. How should the boundary change this time? Right, like I stated, in 2021, you will see a map. You will see that the fifth uh, and the yeah the fifth was the fifth and the seventh uh, were really gerrymandered in 2021. When we looked at and we look at the map of 2011. We see that the, the seventh, you know, um, changed the boundaries a little, um, and the, you know, in the fifth, in the, in the fifth, you know, 
went from uh, in 2001, went from lower Northeast and kind of came back down. I think the issue, and when we look at these 10 councilmatic districts, we can we need to figure out where with this new increase in population, where where does the people go? And where and what input should people have in this process? So the goal is what should the maps look like in 2021? Next slide, please. As we know, previous in our um, presentation is that the, the city's population is 1.6 million. Average every, uh, each councilmatic district, which is 10 councilmatic districts, each councilmatic district should have a roughly about 160,000 people. There are four councilmatic districts that's going to see some type of shift in population. The first district has to lose people. It must lose divisions. Um, it has 171,000 people, right? So that, so that, that so the, the first ward has to shift. The fourth, I mean, the fourth, uh, the fourth district, right? It must gain division. It, it needs more people, right? Because we only have 147. So we haven't seen that much growth uh, in the last 10 years. In the fifth uh, councilmatic district, that we must lose divisions, right? So the fifth must give people, uh, you know, give people to another district. And then the eighth district, we must gain divisions. So when we look at this map, right? And we look at the first district, we have to figure out where is a few thousand people gonna go? Are they gonna go to the fifth? But the fifth has too many, right? Are they gonna go to the second? The second can use a few. Or are they gonna go to the seventh where the seventh can pick up a few thousand? Uh, these are, are gonna be very critical. And even though we have four uh, councilmatic districts that are going to see a uh, shift in population, that means that at least eight districts may be affected because those, those, those that, that population has to shift to a district. Um, anybody have any questions on this particular slide? Here, I, I, uh, there's a, a comment here about um, you know, taxes and how they can uh, you know, impact folks when the, when the di districts change. I, I guess if I could, I'll just I'll take a stab at um, just the kind of the implications, right, when these when these boundaries move around, because you know for, for folks who've seen uh, the topic of redistricting come up a lot at the state or the congressional level, right? I mean, this is like statewide across Pennsylvania. A lot of it's about Democrats and Republicans, right? How many seats are safe for Republicans? How many seats seats are safe for Democrats? That is not, you know, particularly relevant here in the city of Philadelphia, except for the the, nor the Northeast, um, where the tenth district, right, is actually represented by by Republicans because there are just there are just enough Republicans to make that make that possible up in that part of the city. But elsewhere across Philly, it's much much less about Democrats and Republicans and more about communities or. Communities of interest is kind of like the term of art in, in the in the kind of the advocacy around around uh, around redistricting. And so, you know, community can mean uh, right a neighborhood. It can mean a racial ethnic language group. It could mean a business corridor. Um, I just you know saw someone here mentioned uh, the schools. Right, it could potentially be a school catchment area. Right, for other either either a elementary or a middle school or or a high school. Um, a community of interest could also be uh, an, an even larger part of the city. Right, West Philly as a whole. Right, the third the third district. Um, actually, the third and fourth have roughly have both been kind of West. We've had had parts of West Philly going back many, many decades. Um, so, a lot of this, and this is on the slide uh, from the slide of, uh, just a minute ago that that uh, Abu was going through, going through in terms of representation. You know, it's it's generally going to be helpful for generally, not always, but generally be helpful for a community uh, if they're kept whole within a given district, and uh, if their community is you know adjacent. Uh, that are similar, have similar issues, have a you know similar kind of you know vision for the area for them to be kept whole together too, um, and so this will play out in different in different parts of the city. For for a community that is split, they're just going to be less likely to get uh, perhaps the attention that they that they would otherwise, right? So you can see there are a few different parts of the map where you know a given neighborhood might be cut into two or three different pieces even. Uh, by council districts. So, you know, when we're looking specifically at um, the boundary right now, this evening between the third and the fourth in West Philly, you know, there, there are kind of a couple really big questions here. One is, you know, what are those communities that, you know, again, not just folks out here in West Philly, but everybody across the city would want to know about, you know, for any, for who any, who, for whoever might draw some maps. So again, that could be neighborhoods, that could be school catchment areas, that could be business corridors, right? What are those communities, you know, in and around that boundary between the third and the fourth? point number one or question number one. Question number two is, you know, given where those communities are, 
um, how should the boundaries change, if, if at all? Again, I mean, you know, feedback uh, that's, that's kind of affirmative or positive on some of these boundaries, hey, they should stay right where they are, is just as important and just as helpful as, no, I really don't like this district, this district boundary. It's, it's actually kind of split in my neighborhood. I'd like to move, I'd like to see it move that way. So both of those are kind of points of points of input, uh, points of input there. Um, and again, as, as far as like, you know, resources or taxes or anything of that sort, um, again, if, if your community is, is split, it just, it may not get as much attention as, as it would otherwise. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, certainly like with regard to taxes, like your taxes don't change all of a sudden uh, if, if, you're, if you move from one district to another. Um, or, or the funding to, your, to the district as a whole doesn't necessarily change. Uh, but your ability to, you know, advocate and work with or, you know, work, work with or, or uh, you know, lobby your council member, you know, that may differ based on whether or not you're kept whole or not within, within a given district. So I just wanted to kind of give that or kind of reiterate that context when we're, when we're looking at this map here. Yeah, let's see if there are any other kind of questions that are coming up here. Yeah, so yeah, Mr. Mr. Jack, I hear you yeah, talking about the schools, talking about funding for, for public safety. Again, a, a lot of that is, um, you know, if, if as far as redistricting goes, you know, is, is your community kind of kept whole within a, within a given district? Um, and again, you know, this this may not be as big of an issue in West Philly as it would uh, maybe in other other places. Miss uh, Miss Linda, I have um, two questions. Number one, the districts with the population does this include the um, population from the local prisons um, that was changed when they did the redistricting for the state reps? Do you know? You know uh, if those numbers have been adjusted. No, no, these, these, uh, these, these have not. So what, what Ms. Ms. Linda is referring to is that at the state level for state house and state senate districts, there was a decision. And actually this, is, this was uh, because of uh, the hard work of uh, Representative Joanna McClinton, who has a, a role, a direct role in drawing those boundaries. Uh, Pennsylvanians who are held elsewhere, uh, they're held in like, some, some state-run correctional facility and there are about 27,000 uh, Pennsylvanians who will be counted back home. A bunch of them are Philadelphians. Uh, basically, for the purposes only of state redistricting, those folks who are held elsewhere in Pennsylvania, they will be counted back home here in Philly uh, for the purpose of redrawing these maps. Now, uh, we are asking city council to, to use the same data, right? So what basically what this would mean is these population figures on the right-hand side of the screen, this does not include right now those Philadelphians who are held in prison elsewhere in Pennsylvania. And one of the asks for city council, um, and I think we still expect like this will, you know, this will happen, especially since, since the data is available. You know, they will be able to count back here in Philly at their home division, their home address. Um, these folks who are held out elsewhere in the Commonwealth right now, and and so I think what we'd expect is you each of the districts, probably some more than others perhaps, uh, but each of these districts will pick up people um, who are right now again being held uh, held elsewhere. Um, so I'd expect each of them could go up, you know, hundreds or maybe upwards of a little bit more than a thousand each, uh, at, at least. Uh, there's also a question of there, there are 4,000 or so people who were held on state road uh, in, our, in our city prisons uh, last year. And we are still, you know, advocating, we are still lobbying the city to count those folks as well back at their home address. So yeah, long story short, Ms. Linda, no, the, these figures are the straight, the, 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 the direct census uh, data figures. I think they still they still help us see kind of where the pressures are on the boundaries here, but they do not include the, the prisoners, uh, at least not yet. And the only other thing I wanted to add was I, when you're doing redistricting, I know the goal is should be that the map that you're looking at, the one we're looking at now, the map for the councilmatic districts for each district, it should be compact and concise. It should not be spread long or spread jagged up and down. It should be. Uh, Am I right on that? Yeah. So, so therefore, in areas where you see, well, let's say District 3, for example, Councilmatic District 3, and then you see that little thing, it looks like a boot all the way in two. Um, and two looks like it might need some more numbers. So it, would be, it might be logical to move that two, part of two up into three, and then part of three up into Five, where I understand there's an increase in population. Um, so that that's just something I looked at as far as the way the maps are drawn. They definitely don't look compact and concise to me, like like I thought that was supposed to be the goal. It, it is it is one goal. Com compact okay. is one goal, right? Okay. Yeah, there's, there can be a bit of a tension even between some of the goals that are that are out there. Okay. Uh, Thank you. 
Yeah, Here's, um, let's, I guess we'll we'll keep going through the the, the Jabari, questions. I think Jabari has his hand up, uh, Pat. Okay, all right, great. And then and then Ms. Brenda. Yeah, sorry about that. I just wanted to quickly piggyback to the question that was asked a little bit earlier about how um, redistricting affects um, some of the funding that neighborhoods get. So there are two main things that um, I wanted to just um, piggyback on top of that and answer that question. So one of them is a lot of council districts get allocated dollars um, because of the neighborhoods within that council district that may meet certain poverty requirements. Um, that might be set by either council or federal government or what have you. And so sometimes the redistricting may affect the total amount of dollars that a council district may be able to receive and allocate based off of the communities that are within that council district that meet certain poverty demographics and things of that nature. And then the second thing as it relates specifically to commercial corridors that was mentioned earlier, you know, when you have commercial corridors that are divided between two city council districts, or in some cases, there's some commercial corridors that are divided between three city council districts, you know, um, it becomes a little bit harder for you to get cohesive dollars to support programs because a lot of council members tend to be very territorial and want the dollars on their side of the corridor, not necessarily the corridor at whole. So they may say, hey, I only represent, you know, this side of this block or these 10 blocks of this commercial corridor. So when they allocate dollars, it may affect just that 10 blocks and, and it may create issues when you look at the cohesion of that corridor because the council person of the neighboring corridor may not put the same amount of money in. And so now you have these jagged areas where part of the corridor may look nice and may be cleaner and maybe more well kept and maybe more lit. And then once you go a couple blocks in any direction, you know, it doesn't have that same attention, doesn't have that same appeal. And sometimes the businesses or residents in one area may be at a little bit of a disadvantage over their neighbors simply just because how their neighbor their neighborhoods or their corridors have been split up. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Brenda. Oh, go ahead. Hi. Me. Okay. Um, okay. I just wanted to say, so looking at this map right now, are we looking at something in which this whole thing is going to be changing? I mean that by the time the redistricting is done, the whole configuration will be different because we need to spread out um, geographically. I mean, I would say there's going to be certain parts of this map that's not going to change. And there's going to be like very small neighborhoods. Like, for example, if you look at the 8th and the 9th district, right, you see that little portion of the green, which is the Logan and Alney area going into the 9th district. That meeting was about what we had the first time, like, hey, that corridor is split. Should one council person move, you know, over which, you know, would take would, would become the whole council matter district nine. And then that portion where she has to pick up from pull from somewhere else. So each community is going to be different. And I think, you know, everybody who's who's a voter who lives here has the opportunity to draw their own maps. And that's what we're that's what we're pushing everybody to because we're going we have access to a we have access to the same data and the same system that council people use. So you will have access to build your own map and send it to your council person. And say, hey, these are my thoughts as a member of the community on how these maps should be drawn. Um, but what we are trying to do, and and you know, um, Pat, let me know. Uh, let me know um, when I'm. What we're trying to do is to make sure that we're not trying to guide your hand into what areas you want to cut off in this district. We are a nonpartisan. We are a nonpartisan effort, and our goal to uh, to here tonight is to really just to talk about it. Um, and what we're going to do, and I think Scott, I mean, I think um, Pat, let's just move to the digital map because I think once we start looking at how this can actually look, um, it will be easier uh, said than done. Yep. Can I add something on to that before you go on, please? Yes. Um, so for people that have had some experience doing this, you know, being able to redraw, okay, so to speak, is there a group that we in District 4, I'm a part of District 4, can be working with to learn something more about this process? And secondly, I want to thank, I believe it was Jabari, that um, put this information on next door, okay, um, which is how I happen to have found out about it and spread it to some of our neighbors. So you all may want to utilize that 
network as well in the future. Okay, so thank you, Jabari, for putting that on there. Did you understand my question? Yes, uh, Ms. Brenda. Um, we will have access for if you want us to come out to a group or talk to any of your community organizations, we will, we, we can do that from now until December, because the goal is to make sure that we do all these community input sessions. And by January and December, by January and February, we're discussing on what does that look like, right? Because once we get all this information from all these community input meetings, what we're going to do is have regional meetings. Uh, and those regional meetings, I think we're going to really get into the nitty gritty on how to really, you know, design your own map. And if that means like everybody on this call coming together and say, okay, let's really design our map and we're going to give it to the council person, then that's, you know, what we're thinking about. So we're still trying to develop next steps because technically council, technically are supposed to have their own community input sessions. We just don't know how many they're going to have. So hopefully they're going to have theirs, hopefully in December, January, February, I don't know. So if they do have um, those meetings and depending on how many they have, then it may just be a part of our job to push more residents there to give their opinions and to ask these council folks before you release this data and release your maps, could you meet with us to let us know what you're thinking and what you're talking about so that we can all be on one accord. So that's kind of the movement that we're trying to move in uh, January and February, but we're trying to just iron that out while we're also trying to organize 12 community uh, input meetings from scratch. So it's a lot, we don't have the capacity um, but we're doing literally everything we can. You know, we're out there. We have a team going out canvassing, uh, dropping literature on the doors in our targeted community so that we just don't have a room full of RCOs and CDCs. We want ward leaders, committee people, block captains, um, but we don't have the capacity. We don't have a million dollar budget. We don't have the resources to really do what we want to do. So we're making it as transparent as possible and effective as possible for what we have. So, um, and like I said, you would also get a copy of this video um, to share and, and to promote as well. Um, and thank you all for doing this. No problem. Uh, Monique? I have a quick question because I'm totally new at understanding kind of like what redistricting actually means. And I've seen in purple on the map that it says that the third district must gain, um, I guess, more numbers or neighborhoods. And I live on the boundary between a third and a fourth, like literally across the street is what separates it. So what does that mean for myself living in a third district with Curtis Jones, if it means for him to gain more dish, like more neighborhoods? Like what is the goal? And because it's highlighted, that must mean that it's important. I've seen it in pink and purple on the map. Hey, Pat, you wanna take that? Yeah, yeah, and and actually, what and um, you know, when you get that's a great question. Maybe what we'll do is uh, in just a, just a second here, I'll, I'll bring up a mapping tool to kind of to take a closer look at, like at, at the boundary and just give you an example of, like what it actually means to, to move a division from one one district to to another. Um, I there was another. I just uh, there was another question in the, in the chat. I think Victoria, Victoria put the put this one forward around. Um, like what the what the process will be or the objectives as far as like you know city council when they when they do this because uh, yeah, as, as Abu noted at the beginning of the meeting you know Philadelphia City Council will will draw will ultimately draw these districts and then they'll negotiate where these boundaries are and basically the way that'll happen is it will introduce a bill and that bill that bill will describe you know, what the districts look like ward by ward division and division by division so um, you know we're not sure exactly when that's going to happen yet but this is a, this is a, another you know reason why we're trying to do these meetings as soon as we can uh, so that you know folks yeah you know, everyone here and, and other folks across the city are kind of primed to when that when that mapping proposal is put out there uh, to respond to it right away and then you know if if, if you're part of the city if, they, if everything's all good like you know that'll be important uh, and helpful input for or feedback for them to have uh, in a part of the city where the lines have sh shifted in a way that, that folks don't like, um, that's going to be important feedback for them uh, for them too. Um, your Miss uh, your, Miss Jacqueline, did you have an, another question before we brought up the, uh, the I map? I just like to say people, about the, if, you, the if you put up the map on the fourth ward, the problem with that is um, it is gentrified in the past ten years, and the lower part we do not have resources. The upper part, which is Lower and Upper Roxborough, they get more resources than the communities that are called yeah. Carroll Park and Haddington. Mm -hmm. And this has been yeah. going on too long. And we need the resources just like Upper 
and Lower Roxborough of the 4th Councilmatic District. Even Winfield, which is part of the 4th Councilmatic District, get more resources than the lower half. We are stepped on, and we've been stepped on too long. Uh, we are segmented in uh, the lower half of the 4th Councilmatic District due to SEPTA. Um, where I live, the uh, Market Frankfurt L separates the 3rd District from the 4th District. There are no families in the lower 4th District because there's a lack of affordable housing. So they stay in the 4th Councilmatic District for 90 days, and then they relocate to affordable houses in other districts or even in the suburbs. The problem is with the census, the schools in the 4th Councilmatic District has decreased. We have a handful, less charter schools, and we need schools so that we can bring families into the lower fourth district. I'm talking about Market West going up to Gerard Avenue, that great big area that does not have the schools and the quality of life things that Councilman uh, Curtis Jones, he gets reelected, he promises, promises, he gets reelected, he doesn't give us quality of life things and schools in the lower. Um, we do have HUD housing. Because then my parents' generator wanted. My generation, we don't want it because it's only for people 55 and older. And this is why we don't have the schools because of five HUD apartments. And council sees this year after every 10 years they see this. Oh, well, we don't need schools. But we do if we're going to bring families and young bodies in the community. And also with the students, they go to schools, they don't walk to school anymore, like I did when I went to Oldbrook High over 40 years ago. It's, they it's go to schools mm -hmm. in another councilmanic district yeah. because yeah. council closes his eyes on the lower half of his district. And this has got to change. Yeah, well, yeah, Miss Miss Jacqueline, if I if I ever could, yeah, I mean, you you brought up a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of uh, you know, issues there, and I, I know I know I know there's a lot going on. Um, again, if if we if we possibly could through through the through the remainder of the session, if we you know you know try to stay focused on the on the communities where those those where those community boundaries are, and then the district boundaries. I, I again, I know it's very difficult at times to separate. Who represents a given district at a time and, and the district boundaries, but we, we really want to we're trying to get feedback about the boundaries themselves. So one one thing you named, which um, is is directly related to redistricting, is is if if you know these districts are quite large, right? Include about 160,000 people. So you know the fourth district, for example, includes a big old swath of, of West Philly and then a big old piece of, of Northwest. Um, and you know our council members have to try to represent these entire these entire districts. Um, and uh, again. You know, district by district by district, the, the members will you know approach that challenge approach that challenge differently. So um, the fact that there are so many different uh, uh, neighborhoods uh, within the fourth, like yeah, I know that's something that uh, um, well, I guess you just you just name that you name that concern and the fact that a council member has to represent such a such a sprawling district and maybe if it could, if the fourth district could for example be made be made more compact, um, tighter, uh, you know that that may that may uh, that may could you know, that may help that that issue a little bit. Um, I mean, it's it's tough to make big changes to these districts, but when you have those districts in the or those neighborhoods in the northwest, they're they're in one you know one kind of kind of facing one set of issues, and and then some of the other uh, neighborhoods in West Philly, they're they're facing a different set of issues. Yeah, I know that I know that some that's cre that creates some tension there. So again, also like for the, the, this evening, to the extent we can we can focus on the the boundary between the third and the fourth in particular. Uh, that's where we're really, we're really trying to focus on. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Harris, can I, could we go to you? Um, if you have a question or comment real, real quick, I, I think you're over, uh, actually right, right on that boundary. And it, it's very interesting as that's what I wanted to speak to. Uh, we have an artificial boundary which runs down in the middle of Lancaster Avenue, which makes no sense whatsoever. And it's one of these things that causes divisions that logically ought not to be. The natural division of the mainline tracks, which are just a block or so to the north, but uh, it does cause issues for us, and we'd like to see 
an al alignment with a natural boundary. And that probably that general principle would apply in many other places where uh, commonly a major thoroughfare or a business route is used as a dividing line. Uh, it may work, uh, 18th and 19th police districts is a good example in West Philadelphia, which splits a Market Street, which is uh, an issue I think the uh, lady, lady before me was speaking about. If we can get, uh, and of course, you know, if you're talking about block after block of houses without a natural boundary, that doesn't work so well. But in some cases, it will. You know, parks and railroad tracks and creeks and the like. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. Harris, on, on that point, I'm going to pull up the map. Um, and uh, with the time we have left, I'm going to, um, or I'll, I'll just, I'll just kind of walk us through this boundary real quick. And then uh, there, I know there were at least a few folks who um, uh, definitely wanted to weigh in on the boundaries. They at least in their in their registration. Then again, if by the time we have anyone else who wants to comment about the boundary, you like it, you don't like it, you're indifferent. Um, all that, all that would be helpful. So um, again, right, this is the this is the map of the city. This is just the the mapping platform that that anybody anybody would be welcome to to tinker with uh, at some point. You can you can you can tinker with the boundary just in your part of the city, or you could you you could you know redraw the whole map. Um, that'd be entirely up to you, or or neither, right? I mean, just the just the input we're getting this evening and recording um, is going to be valuable here. So. The boundary uh, we're focused on here is right here between the third and the fourth. So just zooming in to get ourselves oriented, right? Here's the here's the river, here's the Schuylkill, and of course the highway right next to it. Uh, on the east side here in yellow, that's the fifth district, right? Currently represented by um, uh, Council President uh, Daryl Clark. Uh, the purple, the third district, of course, this group, this group knows, is currently represented by Council Member Jamie Gaudier, and then the red one just above by Curtis Jones Jr. So just between the third and the fourth, right? This is Gerard crossing the river here. Then the boundary starts to go to the Northwest along Parkside. Once it gets up to Belmont, it dips South again. Um, and it dips South back to Girard before it goes West. And then it goes up Lancaster Avenue here for a stretch all the way up to 50, 54th Street, and then back South again, all the way, almost all the way down to Market um, down here, which uh, let's see, it, it's, it takes a turn, a little bit of a turn right at Vine Street. And then goes goes the rest of the way to market, and then market is the um, uh, is the boundary the rest of the way. So this is, um, and I think this boundary has been pretty similar actually for a long time, right? And then for uh, especially for the the committee people and the and the ward leaders who are with us on the line, you know, you got the twenty fourth ward uh, here on the east side, right? You largely largely Mantua. You got the the, the sixth ward right here in the middle, um, going up to from Market Street all the way up to up to Parkside. And then the um, uh, and then the 44th here, right? That I think actually goes right right up to to, uh, to 54th Street. So those three wards, the 44th, the 6th, and the 24th, right here, are all kind of kept in kept intact. Um, and then again, this your Market Street is the other dividing line, which is also a dividing line between uh, between uh, between wards. Mr. Harris, actually, if you if you don't mind, could I kick it back to you because you you were one of the folks who uh, you know registered to kind of weigh in on, on the boundaries. You uh, Cathedral Park is that the again that the neighborhood you're in? the area of the community? Yes, on the present of Cathedral Park. Okay, and could you get, just give us real quick the, 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 the sense of boundaries for Cathedral Park? Uh, we are bounded on the east by 48th Street, the west by 52nd, the south by Wyalusing, and the north by the railroad tracks. With a little finger along Girard Avenue, which otherwise doesn't belong to anybody, on the north mm -hmm. side, go stretching over to Belmont. There's like three properties in there, furniture mm -hmm. warehouse and a school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I'm saying, did you did you say you, you were, um, was there? I mean, what do you think about this 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 set of boundaries right now as it uh, as it as it pertains to Cathedral Park? Well, if you uh, put your hand back where it was, uh, you see Marion Avenue mm -hmm. to the left there. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just go a little to north of that, and you have the mainline tracks. That's right. a natural boundary. Yes, mm -hmm. it stretches along there, and uh, right now. Uh, part of our, our logical neighborhood is split off uh, because this is artificial boundary in the middle of Lancaster Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's not very many people, but uh, geographically, you know, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And when we're trying to deal with crime and issues, it's a mm -hmm. problem because for the fourth district, this is just a little a toss away, you know, mm -hmm. not of any concern to them, just a <coughs> odd little piece of district which really logically doesn't belong to them, but because of some political reasons, 
uh, they drew the boundary in the middle of Lancaster Avenue. Yeah, well, well, I, you know, I, again, there, there, there can be all, all sorts of different stories as to why these boundaries that are the way they are. I mean, I think the, the, the one of the most likely may be just because these are these also happen to be these these very boundaries right here are also the ward boundaries, um, which, uh, you know, that's, that's another kind of community of interest. So, you know, you know, to like the, you know, south of the railroad tracks here, that would be more of a natural boundary. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, so this this is actually a really good, good example, Mr. Harris. Me, me, Mr. Mr. Christmas. This is this is Mr. Drummond. Wait, I got I got a question before you move to the next slide for you and Mr. Wait, Dwayne, you, Jones. Dwayne, could you just hold up for, just for one second here? Okay, go ahead. Proceed. Proceed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Mr. Mr. Harris, I this is I was just going to say this is like a really good example of where. You know, just let's just say for a second that you know, just kind of south of the railroad tracks right here might have been a better dividing line. Yes. If folks can see here, right, these these kind of little purplish lines right here, like these very thin lines. Mm -hmm. So these are the lines of the divisions, right? And so these are the same divisions we use for election purposes. Um, and these are basically like the building blocks of uh, of the council district. So uh, you know, someone asked a little bit earlier about like what does it mean like with when to gain or lose divisions. Um, you know, in, in this case, uh, you know, for example, for uh, for the fourth district, which is in red, if the fourth district were to transfer this particular division, and let me see if I'm able, if I'm able to click on it real quick. Um, uh, not, I'm not able to do that at the moment, but this this whole division, you know, just for example, if this this if this were to be added to uh, to the third. It would have to be this whole thing. It, we wouldn't be able to stop it right at the railroad tracks. It'd have to be this whole thing. So that's like another little quirk uh, of, of drawing these maps is again, like, like Abu, Abu noted, it's not person by person, block by block um, or anything of that sort. It's, it's division by division. So sometimes that, that makes things, it's, it's easy enough. Uh, other times when the divisions are especially kind of geographically large, like this one is, uh, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, so what we sorry. need to do there then is really redefine the boundary of the division to a, a more yeah. logical place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you on that. That you know, state state law is pretty specific about how these divisions get uh, get get redrawn. But hey, I I think well, at, at other and in, in other um, uh, other uh, redistricting processes else, elsewhere, they do they do have more latitude in that regard. Uh, Dwayne, what was what was your question, man? So it, it was like two questions. So. I wanted to know what communities will would be affected by this proposal for redistricting, and also is like if this is this going to be on the ballot as a question, a yes or no question to the constituents? No, uh, no, no, it wasn't. Good, yeah, great question. I'm glad you asked that to, to clarify. So. So, um, you know, council will have the power to draw these boundaries and what they will do is they will introduce a bill, right? Just like any other piece of legislation, they will introduce a bill that will describe what the districts look like. And so that bill, uh, again, just like any other one, it'll have to be introduced, which, which has to be public record. It has to go into a committee where it gets heard and there can be an opportunity for public testimony. Um, it has to be approved at a committee. And then also like any other piece of legislation, it has to go to the mayor. Uh, who can sign it or veto it? So this would be this is the regular legislative process uh, around uh, at least the mapping bill. So uh, you know what we're doing, and I, I've been noticed this earlier, like you know these community input meetings we're doing because you know I think uh, council does a lot of things on their plate. I mean having having twelve or fifteen public hearings on on top of everything else just on redistricting would be challenging. So that's part of the reason these are we're recording this. We're going to make sure this is a public record. This will be this will be submitted to city council at the at the end of the day. Um, so that everybody across the city has a sense of what folks folks want to see. So, uh, so Dwayne, did you have one other piece of your question in, in addition to just the process? I was talking about the process. I asked what communities or business corridors yeah. will be affected by this proposed redistricting. And I, mm -hmm. my other question was, is this going to be on about? Is this going to be a ballot question? It, or it will go through council as an ordinance. It will not be. It's just well, it'll, it'll just go through council as an ordinance. So there will not be a ballot question. And as, and as to as to which communities will be affected, um, you know, we're, just, we're, not, we're not quite sure yet. And that's uh, I mean, that's what we're here to talk. We're here to talk about a little bit. I mean, you know, you know, Mantua, for example, you know, Dwayne has been in the third for a long time. You know, and we and we won't know exactly what happens until it happens, uh, right? And a, and a bill's introduced, but. You know, for what it's worth, I, I think it's highly likely that Mantua would stay firmly within the third district. Um, again, just kind of looking at the population numbers. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of these some of these areas kind of closer to the boundary. However, like this could change a little bit, maybe not by a ton, but by a little bit. So, you know, another another community of interest, just for example, you know, Lancaster Avenue, right? Big business, business commercial corridor. Um, you know, it is it is has it's split right now. And I think it has been split for a long time between the third and the fourth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe there maybe there are implications to, to that. Mr. Jones, what you got to say? I, I saw you come on there. What you got to say? I, I no, I was just Mr. saying Christmas and uh, Mr. Jones out. Yeah. This, this is not Mr. Jones. This is Charlita Davis, WT for staff for Council Member Jones. Oh. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> glad glad you got something to say. Say it. it. I would if I had to. I'm just I'm listening. Act, yeah, glad. Yeah. Active mm -hmm. listener. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I know here. that's right. Glad you're here. Are there, are there other thoughts about, about this boundary right here or are there other you know, neighborhoods or communities that folks would like to call out um, and just kind of, you know, for folks to have a good sense about where, kind of where they are and where, where their boundaries are? Okay. All right, we'll leave. Let me check, check the chat room here for any other questions here. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, here, I see another comment here about, um, yeah, the, the rail line uh, being um, being a better better division better, be, being a better boundary than maybe the where the division lines are. Yeah, the the, the division lines are kind of tough. The the state law is very specific about uh, how many registered voters can fall within them, um, and they do get consolidated or, or split at time to redraw the, the divisions. But that's it's usually to kind of uh, adhere to state law as far as how many voters can be can be inside uh, inside each. Um, I see a. Here, hand, hand up with the uh, Representative Brown's um, screen there. I'm sorry. I, I just, I yes. There. Yeah. Hey, good evening, everyone. Oh, Representative. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, good to see so, you as well. Uh, thanks. Um, I just have a question and a partial concern. Um, so where are those boundary lines that we're discussing for those residents, for those constituents, is there going to be any, I guess, any polling done um, or any heavy advertisement to raise awareness? Because what well, we have like 30 people on this call and I'm sure if any of those lines were changed, more than 30 people are going to be impacted. So is it going to be any public, outside of public hearings? Because a lot of people don't have access to uh, the technology to attend these public virtual hearings. So what is, what is the plan that's going to be in place to make sure the constituents are one, made aware, two, make sure they have access to be a part of the process? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take a, a stab at that first. Um, and of course, like really, really critical question here. We're, we're doing the uh, the best we can. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, doing the best we can to, uh, you know, f highlight this process uh, for folks across the city. And, and re representative, as, as you know well, kind of an, another complication here uh, or challenge is that the, the releases of the census data uh, over the summer started the redistricting process, not only for council districts, but we have, uh, of course, 26 state house districts across Philly. They're being redrawn. Um, a handful of state Senate districts, they were being redrawn here in Philly and across the state, and then congressional districts uh, also being uh, also being redrawn. So we're, we're drawing a lot of different political boundaries all, all at the same time, and they're, and they're different organizations working on each. Um, it's the council ones that, that, at least for this this particular project, we were, we were concerned about them being overlooked um, with all the other attention on the, on the state and the congressional boundaries. So, so that's what the, the 12 uh, meetings that we've scheduled for this month and next, that's what they're for. Um, there's an online survey we're trying to push out as, as far as we can. Uh, and like uh, you know, Abu noted, we're doing the, the best we can as well that the flyer, we can't fly the whole city, but the canvas around at least the, at least the boundaries where, uh, where, the poten where the potential changes will, will be. So, you know, that's what we're doing our best on our end. Um, and we've also asked, um, you know, city council as well to, you know, on, on their website, make, you know, set up a portal where folks can learn about the process and, and submit, you know, submit comment, you know, have, have a, a scheduled public hearing. You know, similar to mm -hmm. this one, a whole, a whole host of things. Um, mm -hmm. Have not heard back from the council president yet. And, and frankly, if, uh, if there's a, a real desire for public hearings, which I know from our vantage point, there very much is, um, you know, I, the council president's office is, is a decent place to, to start 
um because uh, that's you know that's generally where there's a, like a good bit of influence about how this process will, will play out so um that's yeah. what we're, we're that's what we're trying to do here to, to elevate this this particular redistricting process uh, up during this very close okay very so so i heard okay mm -hmm. okay yeah so i heard you mention um uh you know there will be some flyering in certain areas so what i my request is that when that time comes that it's in enough time to make sure people uh, actually can get it on their calendars and two if you need volunteers to make sure them doors get hit with this information please reach out to me so so we can make sure every constituent is made aware of these possible changes because what we don't want to happen is some changes are made guess whose office they're going to call <laughs> you know so uh, so I want to try to avoid as much confusion as we can. Um, and that's one of the things that I stand on is making sure the community is educated on what's going on, especially something as serious as this. Hey, Red Brown, this is at Boo. Just a quick follow up. And I think this is for like everyone on the call. You know, we are here literally to be like the cream on a cake. Like this is has like literally like this is council's job to come to the community yeah. and host meetings. You guys need to call your council people to ask yeah. them and put pressure on your council folks to say, hey, there are organizations in the community who's interested about this, who wanna learn more about it. Once again, this is the council's person's job, so, okay? So, so can I, we uh, can, give, give me a second, Jabari. We can do what we can on our end um, and we're doing what we can um, with, you know, like I said, not that many resources, but once again, um, this is council people's job to have these yeah. community input sessions in their districts. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is what I'm saying, I'm understanding. Say Let me just say hold something. Was, hold on, hold on, was, did you guys invite council to uh, this, these meetings? Because I didn't, we didn't receive an invite to this meeting. I just happened to receive this link that, you know, this meeting was going on. but. I agree that you know this is council's responsibility, but are you guys actually reaching out to council, not just council president's office, but all of the council members? Every council person knows every between me and Pat, every council person knows what uh when we're coming into their communities. And we made sure that that was the number one priority because I do believe in political etiquette. So every <laughs> council person is aware that these communities are being held and especially the ones that are that are in their targeted districts. So we we I didn't get anything. So I don't know who you sent it to, but I didn't get anything about tonight's meeting. And you're specifically talking about the four. Yeah, the, 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 the council member and, and, and Mr. Cohen both both received notice of it. Um, Mr. Co ja Josh Cohen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, sent, right. I, sent Josh, I sent Josh an email personally. Okay. I'll, okay, check, cool. I'll check with Josh. Okay. So, 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 so back to the resources. So, uh, Abu, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm a fully aware that there might be limited resources. That's why I'm extending my hand to help to make sure you know uh the community is is reached out to because i do understand that is the council person's job but mm -hmm. they got a lot on their plate right now so i would like to be helpful as i can you know so we'll re you, we'll reach out to you rep we'll reach out yeah. to you rep in january as we move to uh plan our regional um session appreciate it okay cool um, I will. can i just yes. ask that I'm not, I'm, I, I recognize you. I'm not sure of the other Gemini. But can you add my email to the list? The councilman doesn't answer his emails, myself and Josh. Well, Josh does. But could you add my email to the, the next follow-up meeting? I will make sure that you get the email for any um, dish, anything involving your district. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Cool. And yeah, so yeah, I, I share the link. Um, oh, am I still on? Yeah, yeah, I shared the link with a few folks. I sent it out to a group because I, I believe that we should have way more people on this call, but this is a great start, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and also, also just to be clear, this will, this will not, in no shape or form is like this is the last opportunity to weigh in. I mean, this is, this is really just kind of the first, first step or two. Got it, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, precious. Can we uh, give good good you recruits if we haven't heard from a? Uh, oh, good, good to see. You. And then uh, Jabbar over, over to you if we could uh, after uh, after precious. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so I just wanted to make a note also just um, in terms of like how outreach looks like and making sure that like voices are accounted for. Um, if this if it's not in the plan already to make sure that we're touching base with um, faith communities, because they have access um, to larger groups of people and looking at the larger groups of people as a way to mobilize and activate and push this information out faster as opposed to like individual people here and there. The um, other thing is also being sure that there's like, you're talking to the trusted messengers in those black and brown communities, because according to these maps, it looked like we're the ones that are gonna be impacted um, if redistricting happens and resources are not gonna be allocated to our communities. So it's really important to touch base with like the trusted messengers in black and brown communities. And even on online communities, I know someone mentioned next door, but one of the ways that I find to be very helpful is like convening those people, convening those spaces and giving them the talking points and not just, hey, share this thing, this is important, but like making sure people understand the impact that it's going to have on their community and why they have to mobilize their list um, and not just put flyers up because we're all in a pandemic. Not many people are even coming outside checking their mail anymore. So like we got to think of new creative, innovative ways to touch people and making sure that we're touching um, organizations and groups, listservs as well as they push this information out and utilizing text messages banks as well as phone banks as well um organizations who have access to resources and platforms in that manner because we got to touch people in multiple ways a flyer is not going to help this is you know 2021 i agree with everything you said no, i no, just well, found out today yeah no well well said well said uh, jabari over to you and then uh, uh miss tara yeah, I just wanted to make a quick, uh, quick comment. Um, and I know that, like, you know, this is always an issue with communities is when it comes down to trying to get information out, especially about very important things when you're working with organizations that typically don't have a lot of resources. But I just want to be like really clear to everybody else that's also on the call, um, and and just also be fair to our partner here at Committee of Seventy, is that again, you know, they're a nonprofit organization. They're not getting, they don't get funded from the city to necessarily do this kind of work. The city of Philadelphia has a budget, right? They have a comms budget. The administration has a comms budget that they could be using to engage those communities. They could be funding people to go door to door with flyers to talk about redistricting. They could be funding in-person events to go door, uh, to in, in each one of the neighborhoods on the borders of those council districts. And yes, I do know that council is, is doing a lot. There's a lot of legislation that's, that's obviously always moving through before council. But we're talking about a deadline um, that's set by the charter for February the 12th, and it's practically December, right? And so this is what traditionally happens when we're talking about these legislative things. And um, typically the deadline comes to two weeks away and there's one community meeting, everybody kind of gets blindsided by it. So I wanna make sure that I acknowledge and I wanna thank the committee of 70 for at least having the foresight of saying, hey, nobody else literally nobody else is talking about redistricting like there this is the like with, other than the committee of 70 and, and i'm pretty plugged into things that are happening across the city and and so is the folks here on this call like literally nobody else is talking about redistricting when there's a charter deadline on february the 12th that these maps are going to change regardless um so i want to make sure that that we acknowledge and thank them for the foresight I think that there's always a better job that can be done about marketing. I want to thank Representative Brown and also I think uh, Charlita as well about, you know, with the offers to, you know, extend some more resources that will be able to help get this message out because Committee of 70 is the only organization in the entire city. And like you said, they're doing 12 meetings for all 10 city council districts across the entire city, you know, with a staff of three. Like that is a huge undertaking. So anything we can all do from the businesses on this call, for some of the nonprofit organizations on the call, um, and even to the to the other political representatives on the call, that we can help get the information out into the communities. Now everybody who signed up is going to be on an email list so that when the future of these discussions come out, you're going to get that information. Anything you can do to help bring that knowledge out further in the community is going to be very helpful. And it's going to make sure that we have, um, we get everybody in the community information they need to get. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Jabari. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Thera? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the organizers of these uh, meetings that are happening, the one tonight and the ones upcoming. And uh, I really want to take my hats off to uh, Jabari Jones and to Abu Edwards. I feel like you are my brother, Abu. I feel like I helped to raise you a little bit in the what you're doing today and hats off to the committee of 70 as well um this is important it's critical i got an email blast just a few days ago but i'm so happy that i did and in that email at the bottom it does indicate the other dates upcoming that you have and so uh as a columnist for the scoop usa community newspaper i did a piece that came out today um it is in our printed edition of the scoop that is distributed in west philadelphia southwest philadelphia up in mount airy germantown section and a lot of different locations. And so it's out there now. I know everybody doesn't read the Scoop USA newspaper. I know that everybody doesn't get the Scoop. But for those of you who do, um, if you go to uh, the civics column, the information is there and it's printed. Uh, beyond that, I do a community newsletter for the Allegheny West Foundation. And after tonight, the very next meeting that you all are doing uh, is going to be on Wednesday, December the 1st at 6 p.m. And it's for the Allegheny West Hunting Park, Nice Town, Tioga area for council districts four, five, seven, and eight, doing another Zoom meeting. And so I'm going to drop that into the newsletter that I do for the Allegheny West Foundation. And so I would respectfully suggest to other um, community organizations that might be a part of this uh, Zoom meeting right now, if you have a newsletter that you do, uh, whether it's an electronic newsletter or something that you print out and distribute, um, maybe you have an opportunity to drop in some of the upcoming meeting dates as well. But uh, again, I take my hats off to you, particularly to you two young guys, uh, um, Abu and uh, Dabari. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Don't be discouraged. Um, I'm proud of you for organizing and getting this ball rolling and maybe showing some elected officials how to get it done. Thank you, Sarah. Here, I, I see a, a couple other hands, uh, hands here. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kirsten, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brady, if you're there. Yes, hello, how are you? Um, so I just wanted to say um, thank you as well um, for organizing this, to everybody involved in organizing this. One of the um, things that the young lady a couple of people ago um, when she was talking about um, tapping into the trusted, um, I forgot, was messengers in the community. One of the things I think may be helpful because she referenced like the talking points, even if a video could be done um, with the talking points and maybe just kind of like, I know you're going to share this video um, and that'll be great, but I think that there's a lot of other things that were talked about in here that kind of take away from what the focus needs to be. And so if maybe if something could be done separately, that's just clear with without the meeting part of it and just the meat and that we can share because one, we know who to share with um, and then we can kind of build out the conversations ourselves from there. But at least having something that was kind of clean, straight to the point, gave us what we needed, helping people understand, which is what I think the whole point of this meeting was, but you know, sometimes we get a little away from that. And I just don't want people to get distracted because I'm the type of person, if you send this to me, I didn't come and you send this to me and it starts getting too much of anything else, I'm gonna stop it. So I don't want that to be the case for others because like everyone said, this is too important of an issue to be missed. So if we could just have something that's clean, in addition to this, because people want to share this, that's fine. But I think that um, that'll be a better tool for us, um, for those who you know are those trusted messengers and can organize and mobilize people in our um, in our community. Chris, I think that's a good idea, and I think uh, hopefully, um, I think that's something we can do, like a thirty-minute video on top of these sessions, on top of sending you our the the brief PowerPoint that we have. I think, you know, right. the more resources, there's never too many resources for you to get, right? So I think that's something that me and Pat can do, kind of going through it um, and just kind of sending that and attaching that to uh, to the video. So that's something- Yeah, I, I think that it, it helps us extend our arms without having to actually extend our arms, you know? Like, okay. so um, I think that'll be valuable. Thank you. No problem. Um, I'm gonna speak to Miss uh, Palmer. 
Ms. Palmer, are you still there? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you were calling me because I, most people call me Archbishop, no, no, no disrespect. So when I hear that, I cue, I cue it. It's I'm like, sorry. Palmer, yeah. is they talking about me or who? Forgive me. I'm sorry, I'm not on video. I'm traveling and I get dizzy looking at me while we're moving. So because I'm an old G, y'all youngins will forgive me. It's normally not my forte. Certainly, I want to say to you all, this is the second meeting that I have been on. I'm a resident of the 8th District where I have lived pretty much all of my life. So I was on the first meeting, which was very well handled and pretty focused. And now I'm on this because my ministry is in West Philadelphia. And then I have uh, constituents and fellow, um, not only parishioners, but um, fellow faith leaders that are all around the city. So it's my intention to be at each one. And what I have made it a point to do is to educate them to please get involved. Um, the young lady making the issue about the video, I think is great. Everyone suffers from overload or an ADHD. And my focus can't be good, but if it's exciting, sort of like how to make a bill, the first thing that came to my mind was how they used to do that little video. And I, I might be dating myself. Um, how to make a bill. It was a little song with a little character and, and the kids were well aware of that. And if it's something really exciting, um, short, but to the point, it will help people to better understand because we're going to wake up and we're going to have a bad reaction to what is now going to be a change. And change is never easy without a voice to it. Uh, I'm also um, a host of my own radio show on WWDB. I'm on every Monday morning from eight to nine and my show replays throughout the week. So I open it for you guys to come on to, first of all, talk about redistricting, what that is, what that means, how that's going to impact us citywide. And then I uh, would we'll be willing to create some kind of a 60 second commercial, even if it's just the announcement of an upcoming meeting or, hey, it's going to hit West Philly or something. And you can certainly reach out to me and we can talk about how that can be done, that I can run on my show. I can also get WWD in their um, commercial set so that people will also hear it. They have a very large following with seven stations in the city. So that's what I'm planning to do besides having this. Now, I did not get a copy of the recording from the first meeting. I don't know who handles that. Um, I don't know if this will also be because my email is attached to this. But if I get both of them, I can send them to people I know in those areas and tell them to become uh, informed. Because once you're informed, then you're accountable to action. Thank you so much for this time. And it's always good to see my mentor, my the one who pushed me into public broadcasting um, when I didn't think I would know how to do it. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the lady herself, the voice, um, Ms. Thera Martin, and I thank God for her because if she didn't have confidence in me, I wouldn't have a louder voice than I do right now. And I do say it loudly and proudly. So when we have legends in front of us who are still doing the work, we should really take advantage of that and appreciate them. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Other other thoughts and thoughts and questions. Again, like this was this was terrific, super helpful. You know, we did get some some input about the boundaries, but like the, just input generally about this whole about the whole project is very very well well taken. Um, any kind of final thoughts and, and questions here? We're a few minutes over uh, over time. Um, okay. Here, if if not, um, uh, uh, Max and then uh, Charlita, if, would either of you like to you know add any kind of final comments before we uh before we sound off again and for, again for the whole for the whole group this is a this was not, not never intended to be kind of the, the end all be all as far as like input on this process and, and these boundaries but really uh one of the one of the early steps so there, there will be more time and more more opportunities but uh yeah max you want to wind real quick if you like that's room on screen there for a second oh. I'll, I'll say something. This is Sharlita. Um, I want to say thank you. Thank you guys for ho hosting this um, community forum. I think it's very necessary and very important. Um, it's, it's necessary in the sense of everyone doesn't know about redistricting at all. And so you, it, it is true that you are going to wake up on whatever day the, the law is passed and 
find yourself in possibly in a different council person, a different council district being represented by someone different that you never knew about. So, you know, information is key. And um, I put my information in the chat. So if you guys could please include me on all um, meetings or forums going forward, I would greatly appreciate it so I could attend. Because I know the fourth district is um, a district where we have to, um, where we will be making, or changes will be made based off of the numbers um, of, from the census. So oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Charlita, and um, thanks to the Committee of 70 for putting on this event. And just really want to echo um, everything that Charlita said. This was great. It was really helpful to um, hear the feedback on boundaries, um, but also just to watch the Committee of 70 walk us through the process and to see the tool in action. Um, and I guess just the one you know, kind of difference I'd, I'd highlight to what um, Charlita said is that the third district, you know, might not actually change um, given the number of um, folks that we currently have in the district. Um, you know, we're kind of right in the um, sweet spot of uh, an acceptable um, number of um, folks in the district, um, but it definitely could change. Um, and so this was really helpful. Um, and I'm also going to drop my email in the chat um, in case anyone has any follow up. Thanks again. All right, cool. No, thank you, Max. Thank you, uh, Charlita. Um, all right, folks. Uh, wait, you don't, one yeah. quick question. One quick question. Yeah, yeah please fire away. Okay, I'm sorry. Where, um, what would you suggest, any sites that you would suggest for people um, just to get some more information on the process itself that we can be doing in the meantime? Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, um, we will make sure that this this whole group, everyone who registers and like, looking at the participant list, it's pretty much everyone who registered uh, show, showed up this evening, uh, will get an email promptly from us. And including that email will be links to the resources that are available right now. I mean, there's some really good suggestions okay. out there this evening that I think we could we can uh, execute on. Um, but we'll make sure people get that promptly. Um, everyone gets that promptly so that you can you can uh, you know, for example go through some of those slides and you a lot of folks here maybe not everybody some folks were seeing for the first time and you can start to kind of digest this a little bit more I, I know it, it can it's a little overwhelming right if you just if you're hearing about this process for the first time and then all of a sudden like you're you're being asked to wait on maps like it's it's a lot um, so again that's why this was always intended to be kind of one of the first steps not the not not a final one but yeah we can absolutely email this stuff along uh, promptly and I mean and Pat just to to, to give everybody a charge. I mean, I charge every organization, you know, to not wait for the Committee of 70 and to continue to host these community uh, meetings in your area. You guys don't need the Committee of Seven to host these. We will give you the resources that's needed, but continue to have these community input sessions until February. You know, the more the merrier, you know, just like one, one young lady said, folks are not jumping on a virtual call. You know, you guys are in the community on the ground, you know, launch some canvassing operations, come build a coalition and say, hey, we want to host two more meetings. And these are the areas we should discuss. You know, I think, you know, the ball is in your court, just like council president would say, um, the ball is in your court is either you're going to shoot it or not. But, you know, as, as stated before, we have a lot of meetings that we have to do. So the, the goal is for these trainings is to empower you so you can go out and empower your community. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to uh, end with.